Western Spain Television. Ours it is. All right. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, world. It is a nice feeling uh, to be back here to do what we do at this time. Thank you very much for joining us. And, um, you know, today is Monday, the official working day of the week. But then from Friday, Saturday, Sunday till now, it's been uh, quite an eventful one, really, nationally, on the business scene, and internationally as well. And uh, Femi Ojo remains my name. That hasn't changed. It's not changing anytime soon. And it gives me great pleasure to be here uh, to do these with you. And of course, not without the lady in yellow. Right. She said, I initially said it's lemon. She said it's yellow. There's but, no lemon. Know, this, let me agree with her. This is yellow. It's yellow. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Fermi. <clears throat> How are you today? Very well. Good morning, people. How are you? It's a new, bright morning, and we are grateful to God for life. Thank you for joining us and starting your morning, your week with us right here on Morning Spring. We appreciate you all of the time. And right here, this is where we'll speak to social political issues affecting us as a people so that you, our esteemed audience, can be better informed and, of course, make informed choices. My name is Evelyn Ohiole. We are here, and why <coughs> we are here is so that we can serve you. Welcome on board. Very well. Uh, you know, um, just like I said, quite an eventful one. Um, uh, let, let's start quickly from the business and before we go right to the papers. Mm. And um, it seems um, the chairman of Dangote Group has been having a lot to say, really. And many persons will say, um, is he just playing it, the victim card or maybe really um, the, the economic and business environment as especially the kind of business that he as he um, yes. like he does um and he's doing now uh, he's really choking to say the least you know he, he granted an interview where he said and he was lamenting painfully that some persons have been accusing him of being monopolistic mm. in his approach to business accusing him of monopoly he said how can he be monopoly he gave an example of um, when he started cement that it was he met Lafarge, a company, and then he came into the scene, and others have come into the scene as well. Talked about the refinery thing and what he has been saying, that some persons are making the business quite difficult mm -hmm. for him, for his business. And um, uh, he said it's not about monopoly for him. It's about the business reality. Uh, you know, I think the chief executive of NMD PRA, one Mr. Ali, spoke and he said nobody is choking him. You, you use the Nigerian balance. It's just what it is. And they have not even licensed him for production, really. That what he's doing is pre-production. And there was some, some snide remark about maybe his content is substandard. substandard. Kind of a jab. And many persons say, is that really needful? Must you say that in a kind of a thing? If it actually substandard, it should not be you saying it as the way you said it. Mm. It should be a regulation thing. You do the investigation, you find it out, you publish it, and then you give him the big hammer if actually that is what he's doing. But it's more like we versus them kind of approach. And yesterday we saw the news again from our legal Danko to say if the NMPCL are willing to come and buy his refinery, it will be ready to sell to them so that it will not just be taxed as being a monopoly. That's a lot. I, I, I'll just start with that remarks from uh, the NNDPRA chair saying mm. that the products coming out from, of, uh, from Dangote Refinery mm. is substandard. I think mm. that is a very unpatriotic yeah. thing to say. I mean, this is a time that we are supporting, advocating for mm. Made in Nigeria products and services. And for an Aliko Dangote to come up with uh, a 20 billion Naira refinery, mm. I think it's much. And you saying that the product's substandard, mm. I mean, it's a very unpatriotic of thing your to kids, man. Exactly. Of your country, man. What will the you know, international community look at us? How will Neighbors. they look at us? <clears throat> you, you understand? And for Aliko Dangote, I feel the man is just trying to keep his head up above the water mm. as is it is right now. I'm 67. What am I looking He's for? He's just trying to keep his head above the water because the situation with the, his refinery, like we said last week, it's not what he had envisaged. Yeah, he said and it. he's like getting all the old attacks in court now, mm. here and there, and he's just trying, to, he's just trying to survive. Mm. 
He doesn't want the refinery to be dead on arrival. Yeah. He has not even started, you know, distributing all so around. And now, all of these issues. These challenges, yeah. uh, a, a refinery, the Dangote refinery is one that the government of the day should support. Mm. Not because um, we want to um, support monopoly, mm. but then this Dangote refinery is like a, a, a national treasure for us yeah. at this yeah, time. So and we should ensure that it survives. Especially as the state doesn't have a functional one yet. Exactly. So we should ensure that it survives. If they are not giving him crude, we know that, yeah, a lot of our crude have been used in exchange for loans and all of that. Mm. But we should find a way for Dangote refinery. A lot of people were happy really? when it came on board. Right mm. now, it's looking like there was no reason for us to be celebrating. And there are some political the undertones as well that maybe he's not being supported because he didn't play ball during, you know, the um, campaigns, support, so to speak. These are conspiracy theories as well. I'm talking about the, the standardization. It should be mm. about what are you doing? Speak to us. What we are getting from you is bad. Do it rightly or we give you the big gamma, not just deflecting, more like the person you guys are trying to show, like, um, that is trying to accuse us, whatever is produced is even substandard, like a petty kind of a thing. As, as we eat the bricks right now, yesterday uh, in the U.S., um, a new twist, you know, um, was established when President Joe Biden announced that he will be stepping down from running for the race, for that continuing in the race for the president of uh, the United States of America. So it won't be retaining that seat, and then we'll be having uh, that discussion in the course of the program as well. It's morning spring on Western Spring Television. We have a lot to talk about today. Stay with us. All right, I'll be kicking off uh, with the Vanga newspaper. Vanga newspaper. An economy faces threats with 1.4 million barrels per day crude output. Economy faces threats with 1.4 million barrels per day crude output. I'm reading from the front page of the Vanguard. And with riders. Um, industry experts point to tax ports, make recommendations. We can produce 2 million barrels per day, NNPC. Nigeria needs energy minister, not president, to drive industry. And Agbakoba, I think we said this, Evelyn talked about this last week, and um, uh, we are the minister, Jeremy Buhari, uh, the minister for petroleum, was the president himself, and then he had uh, Minister of State, now we're having two Minister of State mm -hmm. and we are still having all these issues. One for gas, one for petroleum. NUPRC concluding divestment to boost output, Kamala Fair. Moving on, Biden quits presidential race. And of course, um, you can see the picture of the man there raising the hands of, in this picture rather, raising the hands of the Vice President. His current vice president, <clears throat> excuse me, Kamala Harris, and um, we learned he has endorsed her to move ahead, but that will not be, that's not how it works. They will have to go for convention for that. A refinery having repeated orders from abroad. Dangote Navy, Nimasa disagree over proposed law on maritime security. And on the sports scene, or seamen absent from Napoli preseason, preseason rather, that Victor Seaman there will learn he might be on his way to Paris to go and join PSG. That would be a big money move, and of course, a career boost. We wish him all the best. And here, U.S. election, why Biden withdrew from presidential race? Three civilians, inspectors, Two assailants killed as gunmen attack police team in Abba. Uh, we should not be having that, but then that is what we have on the newspaper, the Vanguard today, and on the humor side, the coming side of Mr. and Mrs. Uh, this is coming from Mrs. Toby and his wife started selling cement years back. The profit they made every year turned their marriage into a concrete relationship. Oh, wow. That's good play of words. Yeah, they good also fun. supply super glue 
they are now completely inseparable. Uh -uh. And Mr. responds, do you suggest we start selling wed welding materials? <laughs> 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 that you know their relationship will be well welded yeah as well that will be all from the front page of the vanguard for today a good pun used there yeah. by mr and mrs let's move on to this day newspaper news day newspaper this day newspaper rather and um the big headline on this day mm. you know it's talking about what uh, Patients living with diabetes are, you know, calling out to the government to save them because it's looking like a death sentence. As you can see, a death sentence. President Tinubu, please pay for our treatment with funds from higher sugary drinks tax. Mm. President Tinubu, please pay for our treatment with funds from higher sugary drinks tax. Diabetes, with a quote here, uh, diabetes took my eye insulin prices could take my life mm. and um, you know you can see a patient there uh, living with diabetes it, it's a sad one for me yeah. especially for people who have to rely on insulin for life yeah. you know the cost of insulin now has gone over the roof and Almost people everything. are paying through their nose just to stay alive yeah. so imagine someone who has to deal with diabetes for the rest of your life mm. and they do not have the money to get uh, the insulin injection so yeah. that they can stay alive some would have to lose their eyes some would have their to limbs. lose their limbs or anything mm. some may have to die and they do not have to die like this um story is saying mm. that you can use the funds from the sugary tax you know to pay for our treatment you can subsidize the cost mm. of insulin so that patients can people living with diabetes can actually get uh, you know, access mm. to it at a very low price. Mm. It, it's oh, a subsidized. sad situation. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that's what I'm saying. Mm. Away from and that... Of course, I think it's a lesson for young persons as well. Mm. If actually there's a way you can cut down on some of these things. If there are measures you can take that um, is within your reach, yeah. maybe we should do that. Yeah, as well. should, Especially as we're approaching some particular age. Yeah, but so, for some person, it's hereditary. Some person yeah, just I know. had yeah, to... Yeah. Even with living right, living genetic, well, yeah. yeah, genetically, they had to, you know, deal with diabetes. Away from that, Biden quits presidential race, endorses VP Harris. Uh, and um, as we know, with that endorsement from Biden, history kind of was made yesterday hmm. because um, Biden stepping down and endorsing his vice president, who is not just a woman but a mm. woman of color a black woman right. you know history mm. has been made we've had a black president in the united states of america yeah. and the president of barack obama obama now uh, vp kamala harris mm. the first black woman vying for that position of the president that, that will have to be endorsed by the convention yes uh, yes but and it's a getting the endorsement from his boss from her boss it's rather, a big deal it's a big one and you know when but i saw the story yesterday i was the like intricacies in u.s politics is complex very and you know when i saw the uh story yesterday i was like nah nigerian politicians left the whatsapp group blocked the admin we'll get threw away that. the Don't phone <laughs> They will die there. Because it was just so easy <laughs> for Biden to Not really that endorse. easy, easy. Okay, I'm talking about the stepping down. Now. Yes, stepping down and also endorsing Har uh, Harris. It right. was so easy for yeah, him. Yeah. You know, it didn't take days for him to step down and later on say, okay, who do I want mm. to endorse? Or Meet with a, the party big wigs, have meetings older. upon meetings and, and all yeah. of that. We'll get there. But then it's good to note that he has said that he will still have to complete a six-month uh, the remaining six months of mm. uh, this presidential uh, term that he has, mm. uh, but the next one, he will not be vying for yeah, it. And Dangote out. fight back. Dangote fights back. Mm. Yeah, he's trying to keep his head above the water at this mm. time. Uh, away from that, Zanith Bank retains position as Nigeria's number one bank by tier one capital for 15 consecutive years. Good one by Zanith Bank. That will be all from this day newspaper this morning. All right, I'm um, talking about uh, banks in Nigeria priding themselves to be achieving a lot, which is fair, so to speak. Many Nigerians will say um, the service, especially that they render mm. to consumers, to customers, is it that excellent? Is it stress-free? 
I'm not talking about the product uh, in which um, they churn out the goods and services, no, but about how they um, attend their customers, irrespective of either you're a money bag or mm. you're just somebody with a thousand error in his or her account. That's one thing because I've been to some banks in this very environment in which all I was going to that bank for was just to have um, um, I, I, my app, you know, mm. restored. I changed the device and then to log into the new one, it was becoming difficult. I couldn't do that. And I was at this bank three times. And you could see people loitering mm. around, sitting on the floor. Mm. And you could see bank officials just moving around. Although, to be fair, you see some of them that they are overwhelmed. A lot of banks are short staffed, even all of them. You see one person working, working the functions or doing the duties of two, three persons, and he's a lot. So the moment you try to approach them, you see them a bit edgy, mm. and he's a lot. And you see these banks now at the end of the year saying they made high figures and they are these and that, they are the best in these. But please work on your customer base and customer relationship. Moving on. Um, from that, we move to the nation, the nation newspaper. Nigeria's economy and growth path says Reno Amokri. Okay. Um, yes. Um, okay. The nation, again, rather. Um, government target, I beg your pardon, without um, the nation for today, government target two trillion era in banks, forex, gain tax. With riders, finance institutions to pay 50% of windfall, expert caution on timing, and top strip, Clinton, Obama, Hillary, Pelosi, others hail Biden for endorsing Harris. Okay. And Echoes raises $38 million grants. Boost SMEs with a rider at Inubu, um, on Folds plan in Accra. Former General Secretary Osigwe is NBA president elect. The election into the office of the president of the Nigeria Bar Association was held at the weekend and um, it has produced. Um, Afam Osigwe. Afam Osigwe. Uh, okay, all the best to him as well. And Zenith retains top sport as Begs Bank for record 15 years. That will be all from the front page of the nation. Yes, and from the nation, we head on to the Guardian newspaper at this time. What do we have at, uh, on the Guardian newspaper this morning? NPC, starting with this. NPC, costly policy trade-off as FX crisis, minimum wage, stare fresh challenge. That's the Monetary Policy Committee saying costly policy trade-off as FX crisis, minimum wage, stare fresh challenge. Lagos government issues contravention notice to Aja property owners. Lagos government issues contravention notice to Aja property owners. Money supply to deep by 20 trillion naira as banks offload uh, dormant account proceeds. This is on the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian. Money supply to deep by 20 trillion naira as banks offload dormant account proceeds. And Femi, there have been concerns about this new announcement from the CBN mm. saying that all dormant accounts, the you know, monies and funds and dormant accounts across. Uh, uh, the different financial institutions should mm. be permitted back to the CBN. <laughs> Nigerians are asking why this is. Why? And um, for uh, maybe next of kings that want to yeah. uh, claim the funds from yeah. the deceased. Yeah. How hope it will not be a tougher and longer process now mm. because normally people complain about the process to you know claim the funds of a deceased or of a loved one mm. being so rigorous, being it rigorous is. now. You know, moving the funds from the different banking institutions to the CBN. Mm. Hope it will not be so tougher and longer. Yeah, that's yeah. one. Because even if, even within these deposit money banks, for you to claim such fund as an extra pain is not always easy. I've been involved before. It mm. takes a lot, mm. really. And there are some depositors that maybe, sadly, they died. They didn't have the benefit of whatever reasons best known to them. Um, 
they didn't give that information to their next of kin yeah. that they had funds here. Now, I'm not sure we have that culture as a bank, either it is legal or illegal, I don't know, that banks will reach out to next of kin. There are reasons why you put next of kin. It should not be that when you are, if such a person is owing, before he or she dies, the bank will reach out to the next of kin. Exactly. But when the man or the woman has funds in such accounts, I'm not sure mute. I've ever had that the bank will call mute. out and say, for five years we haven't had from this depositor. Exactly. Hope is alive or something. Why don't we do that? And that's why the bank has a customer relationship unit, yeah. a customer service officers. unit that reach out to their, to their customers. Mm. And in the event of in the event of a customer dying, mm. they reach out to the next of kin, yeah, even if they are not aware. There is a particular amount of money here. Exactly. Are you the next of kin? Can we see you? How do we do this? We, we don't get to hear that mm. banks will call anybody. And, you know, there are insinuations that maybe some of the officials might even be happy to say that is it. Now that we are hearing that the CBN is saying every uh, money that has been dormant or account, maybe over 10 years or yeah, so, years. you should reach out to us to do what? If actually on the 11th year I get to know that my father has money with you, then I have to go through your bank and then going through the right. rigors of going to the CBN. Yeah. Yeah. How does that? Is this? Is this? So we say, is this, are we that broke that we are we are uh, scavenging mm. on anything? Mm. Or is official? If it's official, we should know. But banks should reach out to to um, nest of kings. If yeah. actually you can't reach out to the depositors, mm. it. Instead of waiting for them, you know, not to appear forever. All right, we should even have conversation on this, yeah. you know, in the course of the week. Away from that, Democrats shop for new candidates as Biden pulls out of re-election race. Democrats shop for new candidate as Biden pulls out of re-election race. Proposed bills stirs fresh controversy in ICT sector. Proposed bill stirs fresh controversy in ICT sector. Hold governors, others to account for 2023 electoral offenses. Court orders INEC. Uh, we learnt of a new judgment. And, um, you know, 2023 elections, governors and their deputies have been said to be held accountable for issues of vote buying, electoral mm. violence, and the different elections that took place in 2023. And, um, uh, okay, still on the Guardian newspaper, Dangote rejects monopoly claims, halts investment in steel industry. Now fund to disburse 37 billion Naira students' loan to 112,000 applicants this week. Uh, students' fake abduction to receipt UTME says jam. <laughs> students' fake abduction to receipt UTME says jam. All right, uh, you can get on to page nine of the Guardian newspaper this morning to read more details for yourself. That will be all from the Guardian newspaper this morning. All, all right, um, as um, bizarre as that sounds, that a candidate will want to fake his own kidnap mm. so that, um, uh, you know, he, we don't know if he's a he or she now, uh, could have a receipt mm. that... <laughs> For such a person with that kind of mindset, are you sure when you finally see it, you are ready for that kind of exam? And, and I think at a stakeholders meeting recently, mm. was it last week, uh, the JAM registrar, Professor Isha Koloyede, mm. spoke about some things. And some of it, you found it unbelievable. But he was the one saying it. And he, and he said, work with me. There are proof you know, that some of these things happen. He said people are saying um, 16 years of age is such a person ready for admission. 14 years, we are hearing that it has been pecked at 18, some saying 16. He said there are institutions that take 10. He said it himself. And you are wondering, 10, how? How can a 10-year-old finish secondary school? How? How many double promotion or triple promotion? Is a 10 year A old? young Sheldon. Sheldon. <laughs> The, the we have so many Sheldon's Sometimes, around, probably. if that is true, because he said it himself, and for a person of his stature, you wouldn't expect him to be dealing in hearsay and rumor for a person. He has been a former VC, but for now he's in charge of JAM. And you, what will a 10-year-old be doing at a university? To prove what exactly? The thing is, 10-year-old, when they shout on a 10-year-old in a university, you will run and call mommy. You know, <laughs> these are some of the issues. But then I think... Parents as well should be, should not be too over ambitious, yeah. really, because there are some of these parents that push 
One, and I'm not sure it's because of the child. Some do it for themselves, that I'm the mother of this genius, I'm the father of this genius. There is the social um, part, there is the uh, mental part, not yes. just the book, not just the education, so to say, the text, the letters. Mm. What would a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, 14-year-old yeah. be doing? I've, I've, I've actually heard of an 11-year-old child who was made to write jam by mm. the parents, but it couldn't pull through because um, jam rejected um, our age, mm. 11 years old, and uh, you know, the, 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 the child get, got into um, secondary school at age eight. Mm. Eight. At age eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> 11 year old, three years. Are we, going, are, are we saying that the child used three years to, to, for, secondary. for secondary school I, 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 instead of six Just years? Just one, two, three. So, <laughs> it, it, it's alarming, and yeah. there, the situations exist. It, it does. The situations really. exist. Well, it's I, you know, flashback to when I wrote my first jump, I wrote it in SS1, and I remember when I told my teacher then that I wanted to write jam that my dad wants me to write jam in ss1 she's like well, why is your daddy rushing why, why is he rushing but, as a young shed on it you know <laughs> my dad <laughs> actually wanted me to have the experience not that when i passed the jam i'm going to uh, mm. okay it wasn't jam at the time it was neko and why yeah the, the ss so that first. yeah the ss so that i can have the experience by the time mm. i'm writing it in ss2 i'm getting mm. used to it and ss3 i'm going to clear my paper once mm. so that was my dad's mentality then yeah. and i explained to him like, mm. okay okay that's good so far he doesn't want you to go to university from SS1. Yes. Mm. So if that is the situation, maybe. But then from SS1, you move the child into uni, the child skips SS2, SS3. Mm. Mm. You know, a 12-year-old child wanting to go into uni. If the child is that smart, can he or she deal with the stress? Yeah. Mental stress, psychological stress mm. that comes with being in Pressure. uni. This is Nigerian Peer university, pressure. I yeah. have to stress, because mm. even those that are 18 and above, when mm. they get into unit, and e e the stress is killing. Yeah. Especially is. your first year, your registration, doing your registration, doing your clearance and all. You, you literally want to die. Yeah. So imagine a 12-year-old <laughs> child that is supposed mm. to still be learning uh, uh, mathematics and intro tech mm -hmm. in GS1 or 2 coming into uni. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's not you a know, One, I want to say, um, different human beings, different young people with their intellect, they are sharp, they are brilliant. Yeah, brilliance on one side. Yeah. Just like I said, about the books and the text, but how about uh, the mental part that you talked about? I mean, when you see, and then you are having classes with some Egmont Adubos, the way they, they say, people have been, who oh, 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 have tried and tried, people in their 30s, how do you cope with mm -hmm. that at 10, at 12, a, 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 a university person or student that, that cannot even cross a main road? What's that one doing there? <laughs> These are some of the issues because you see people in their things, 16, 17, yeah. 18, you can't cross a main road. When, <laughs> when some persons are their primary one, <laughs> they're already leaving school to go back to the house themselves because nobody will bring them. Yeah. And for 11 or 12 year old, maybe they might have to be shuffled around. You know, given a driver, mm. a nanny, mm. so to speak, in a university and your university student, just because you can prove and say, my child finished university at the age of 14. And so what happened to life? These are some of the issues as well. But then it is what we are seeing. Brilliant. Being a genius, that's very fine. But let's do what is proper. And it's at this point that we take this break when we come back. As I said earlier in my introduction, there is a lot to talk about the NLC, uh, TUC's agreement of this 70,000 hour proposal about the federal government. And now that it has been agreed at the national level, what becomes of the state as well? And of course, the dynamics into the presidential race in the US in the coming few months, um, the dynamics that have been thrown into the race by the stepping down of the current president, Joe Biden, the endorsement of his vice. You know, the Trump camp, the convention of the Democrats is a lot. We'll try to unravel as much as we can this morning. Please stay with us. And let's tell you that we are beaming live on our channel 190 on Star Times DTT and also on our social media platforms on Facebook and also on our YouTube channel, all at Western Spring Television. We'll be back. Stay with us.